Now listen, I really enjoyed watching Astaf movie when I was younger. I've grown up watching a lot of Tom Scar's content, including hashtag content. So if for some reason, Tom, you happen to be watching this video, then don't bother. It's not going to be that good anyway. I know what you're thinking. What could a physicist have to say about Astaf movie? For those of you that are new here, I try to make videos explaining high-level physics concepts in as simple and visual a way as possible. In today's video, I'm going to be using classical physics. That's basically the physics you'd learn at high school. You know, Newton's laws and such. To analyze one particular skit in Astaf Movie 3. This one. Pfft, screw gravity. Pfft, screw gravity, eh? Pretty strong words. Now, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, well, actually, physics doesn't allow a cartoon character to screw gravity and float up into the air. I'm not going to be a badass over here. No. I'm going to treat this clip as experimental evidence and try and come up with a physical model that describes the universe that these characters are in. So first things first, let's talk about this character's weight. Before we decide to screw gravity, this character seems to have weight. Everything seems to be working as normal as we would expect in our real universe. Now, remember that weight is simply the gravitational force exerted on an object with mass. In this particular case, our friend is the object with mass. And it's exerted by, in this case, the planet they happen to be standing on, probably Earth. And you might know that the weight of an object is calculated using this equation here, where W is the weight of the object, M is the mass of the object, and G is the strength of the gravitational field of the planet they happen to be standing on. Well, this particular equation is actually a very special case of a much more general gravitation equation. This equation only really applies very close to the surface of the planet. So close to the surface that we can essentially treat it as flat. And when the other object, in this case our friend here, is much smaller in both mass and size compared to the planet. Instead, we'll be looking at the more generic equation that works for any scenario. That equation looks like this. Now, I realize it looks a bit scary, but trust me, it's not. Here, F is simply the gravitational force that's being exerted between the two objects. M1 and M2 are simply the masses of the two objects that we're calculating this force for. In this particular case, our friend and the planet that they're standing on, again, probably Earth. And R is simply the distance between the centers of the two objects. Technically center of mass, but that's not super important here. Now, G is just a constant, but it's a really important constant. It basically encodes just how strong gravity is in our universe. If G was slightly bigger, then the force of gravity between all things in our universe would be stronger. And if G was slightly smaller, then the gravitational force between any objects would be weaker. Now remember that this is the equation that describes the behavior of gravity in our real universe, with the gravitational constant having this particular value here. There's no guarantee that it applies to the Astaf-verse. However, for argument's sake, let's just say that it does apply. And then if we spot any inconsistencies, we can change it. So, in order for our friend here to screw gravity, one possible course of action is if they hired their friend Wizzo the Wizard to change the value of the gravitational constant in their universe to be zero. Now, doing this would obviously be catastrophic. Remember that the gravitational constant encodes just how strong gravity is in that universe. And if we set this to zero, gravity no longer exists. There'll be no gravitational forces holding planets in orbit around stars. There'll be no gravitational forces holding satellites in orbit around planets. There'd also be no gravitational forces holding people onto the surface of the Earth. In other words, as soon as Wizzo changes the value of the gravitational constant to zero, because our friend wants to screw gravity, this universe is basically doomed. But luckily, we wouldn't notice it at least for the first few seconds. And luckily, this skit only lasts a couple of seconds. So this is definitely a plausible explanation. Now, at this point, you might say to me, if we switch gravity off by setting the value of G to be zero, why isn't the other person floating around? Well, technically, even if we instantly switched off gravity, each one of these people would need some sort of force in order to push them off the Earth's surface. It's like Newton's first law of motion says, objects at rest, which currently these two people are, tend to stay at rest unless acted on by an external net force. In other words, these two are going to stay exactly as they are. We'll see why our first friend doesn't in just a second. If we were to instantly switch off gravity because they are both at rest relative to the surface of the Earth, they are not moving, which means that they are not going to stop moving for no reason. Even if we looked at this whole scenario from some other frame of reference, let's say we were looking at it from the surface of the planet Uranus we would see that these two people are rotating with the surface of the Earth before the gravity switched off. And as soon as it is switched off, they would continue to move with that speed because they already have that amount of momentum from before. Eventually, of course, we'd see them being fired off in this direction here. 
But that would take a really long time because the Earth is so much bigger than they are. And so it will take us a while to notice they're actually traveling in this direction rather than in a circle. So if our friends should not be floating away as soon as gravity is switched off, then why is this guy doing so? Aha, well this is the beauty of the way that Tom has framed this shot. We don't see their feet. For all we know, this person is using their calves of steel and doing a superhero takeoff. By the way, I have a song called Superhero Landing. Check it out on my second channel here. But anyway, so for all we know, this person is pushing off from the surface of the Earth as soon as the gravity switched off. There is now a net force being exerted on this person in this direction, and that initially causes them to lift off the surface of the Earth. So it kind of looks like the gravitational equation that applies in our universe would also apply in this particular universe. And as soon as this person screws gravity, we're essentially changing the value of the gravitational constant to be zero. There are other ways to achieve the same effect, however. One of them is to just change the mass of the first person to be zero. And then nothing else in the universe changes, not even the gravitational force between the second person and the Earth. The only force that changes is the force between the first person and the Earth, and they're still kicking off and they're still floating off into space as expected. The reason I don't think that that's the explanation, though, is because everything else would be the same in this universe, and that's not catastrophic enough for a Tom Scar sketch. So, just to recap, before the screwing of gravity occurs, it seems like the law of gravitation that applies in our universe seems to apply in this one as well. And it also seems reasonable that these two people are on a planet just like Earth. But then at some point, the value of the gravitational constant in this equation becomes zero. Thanks, Wizzo. Wizzo! <laughs> and then our friend here just decides to kick off from the surface of the Earth and float away. I wonder what happens when they get to the top of the atmosphere. Actually, I suppose that doesn't even matter. The people on Earth have got much, much more pressing things to be worrying about at that point. And with all of that being said, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel for more fun physics content. I have a Patreon page if you'd like to support me on there. I often post worksheets with my videos that you guys can have a go at, and you don't need to be a patron to access those worksheets, but I post video solutions to those worksheets on my Patreon page. Now, my next video is going to be a bit more normal in terms of what we talk about. I'm going to be returning to talking about high-level physics concepts. But if you enjoy these kinds of silly videos, then let me know in the comments down below as well. I really appreciate all of your support. It never gets old. The lovely comments you leave me, thank you so much. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you really soon.